everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris and I am a gorilla in the wrist. Today we're looking at the San Martin SN051G. Uh, this is San Martin's attempt at um, a Seamaster 300 um, and it's a pretty decent effort. We're going to go through the specs and we'll do a quick run through the watch. Um, first up I wanted to do a wrist check. So stay. I'm sorry a bit boring people at the back rows um, but today I'm wearing my new San Martin arrived freshly from the 1111 sale very excited this will be coming not for unboxing obviously because I've blown that but will be coming for review very shortly so this watch is 39 and a half millimeters has a lug to lug of 48 millimeters and a lug width of 21 millimeters and it's sporting the Seiko NH35 movement, a domed sapphire crystal, and is water resistant to 200 meters. So a very quick run through of the watch for you. Um, as I say, this is a Seamaster homage. Um, it's around about a 40 millimeter sandwich dial um, with a blue ceramic bezel, blue dial. Uh, the colors are gorgeous. They really do absolutely pop. Um, so in terms of the dial itself, what we have is a blue sandwich dial. Um, we have minute markers. We have triangular um, markers cut into the sandwich dial, uh, 12, 3, 6, and 9. Um, so we have arrow hands. Um, we have a long minute hand, um, a much shorter hour hand, but a a uh, very pronounced um, arrow head. Um, we have a lollipop second hand, which has a small lollipop on the counterbalance as well. Um, the dial carries the San Martin italic name uh, above the pinion and below the pinion 200 meters automatic. The finishing on the both the case and the bracelet is absolutely exquisite. Um, let's just see if we can get this into close, closer focus. Um, what you see is that we have brushed edges. Um, we have a crown with the um, San Martin logo on it. Um, but we have very um, polished surfaces on the upper lugs. Um, the, the bit that really fascinates me is there is a chamfered edge on there, but it's angled. Not very easy. There we go. Um, it's an angled chamfered edge. And what that does when you sort of look at it on the whole, is that actually makes the profile of the watch look thinner than it really is, um, just through that little bit of angling down. Um, it's remarkable finishing. It is very, very good. Um, we have a brushed bracelet again with very polished um, outer links and brushed inner links all the way around. Uh, we have a very nice um, brushed clasp. Um, proper scissor clasp um, with the San Martin logo stamped on. Uh, we have safety pushers um, so that it is secure and it comes with um, screw pins um, and four le levels of micro adjust. Um, and a lot of credit to the San Martin store. I did tell them that I have a massive wrist and they sent me two extra links with it in order that it fits. And this fits very comfortably, which is quite impressive. Um, I think I think the standard length is about seven and a half. Um, so the fact that they were able to send me the extra links to make sure it fit, fitted without any extra charge, I think is really, really positive. Um, and the weight with the extra links added on for me um, and sized up for my eight and three quarter inch left wrist um, comes in at just under 170 grams. Um, this is a substantial watch. Um, and also on the back, um, we had a very nice upside down, try again, a very nice deep edged shark um, with a little bit of the specification um, explaining we have the SN, uh, we have the Seiko NH35 movement, um, stainless steel and 200 meters water resistant. It was very nicely done. So for all that good stuff, um, I do have some gripes. There are some things I don't quite like about this. Um, the first one is the bezel. Um, so it works fine, um, but it feels, I don't know if you can see it on the video, it feels very thin 
Um, and if I was guessing, I would say it feels slightly plasticky as well, which is very unusual. I don't sit, tend to come across um, that sort of short cutting in San Martin watches, at least not in my experience. Um, and it feels cheap. It does feel cheap. Um, I'm also not a big fan of the San Martin name on the dial. I would rather that they get their branding um, lined up and consistent. I really like the logo on the um, buckle. I really don't understand why they just don't hold it the right way. I really understand why they don't just use that as the branding for the um, for the watch and have that on the buckle, the crown, and on the dial. Um, it just feels like a missed opportunity, um, particularly as they have such a good reputation. Um, so for me, I think I think there's some gripes there. Um, Um, I also have some concerns about the loom. So we'll put a loom shot up at the end of the, the video, as I usually do. Um, it is C3 Super Luminova, so my expectation um, was reasonably good. I think compared to San Martin's other offerings, I just don't think it holds up as well as the others. Um, and they are variable. However, normally the loom off the San Martin watches is very good. And on this one, I don't think it does the watch any justice. Certainly it doesn't um, stand up to the other ones I've got. Um, and that, that is a little disappointing to me. So in terms of price, these are coming in at around $200 in the sales. Um, I would pick one up in sales if you were going to pick them up. But should you pick one up at all is the question that I guess we should be asking. So summing this watch up, it has a lot to admire. There's a lot to really like about it. Um, the finishing is just sublime. It is a beautifully done watch. Um, the bezel itself whilst it's disappointing and feels a little bit cheap again it, it looks good and it does do the job there's no back play in it so it, functionally it's fine um i think my biggest problem with this watch and i've never had the original so i've never had the um seamaster 300 on my wrist or in my hands um and i'm sure it's a wonderful um experience um but for me i just find the style of this watch is a little bit ostentatious which sounds ridiculous when you're talking about the homage of a luxury watch um, but it is it just feels very very blingy um, and I'm, I'm not a blingy person I mean some of that will be because of the high level of polishing on it um, it, it does sparkle from all angles um, but for me it, it, there's just too much of that um, it doesn't suit me and it, it slightly worrying because I do want to get a Seamaster at some stage. I suspect it wouldn't be this one. Um, so a lot to admire about it. Would I recommend it? Yes, I would recommend it because I think it is a fantastic watch. Um, but I don't reach for it often enough to justify spending the money on it, um, which is a real shame because it is a lovely watch to look at. Um, wears well. It wears, wears well on my big wrist as well. Um, so Lot, lots to say in its favour. Um, whether I'm going to hang on to it in my collection at this point in time, I suspect probably not. Um, I, I think there are other watches that I would enjoy more, so I'm probably going to flip it for something else. Um, it'd be good to hear what you think. Um, so that really just leaves me to wrap it up. Say thank you for sitting through the video. Um, we're going to put a loon shop at the shop up at the end. Um, we have had also had. Um, a, a reasonable uh, number of arrivals from AliExpress over the last week. So there's lots of stuff to be reviewed um, and a giveaway at some point in the next week or so as well. Um, other than that, enjoy the rest of your day. Have a fantastic weekend uh, and hopefully I'll see you back. Um, if you didn't enjoy this video, um, please let me know in the comments. I'm very keen to learn about um, what you guys really want to see. Um, if you did like it, please hit the like and subscribe com comment the like and subscribe buttons uh, and leave me a comment it's great to hear your views and your thoughts um, thanks very much take care